Hey everybody, welcome to True Stream. Talking about art and life as an artist, here's your host, artist and educator, Bobby Chu. All right, hey everybody and welcome to True Stream. I am very excited and honored, as always, to welcome my wonderful friend, Justin Gobi Fields. For those of you that don't know who All Justin right, Gobi... Hey everybody and welcome Whoa, to True Stream. Whoa, shoot. I am very I excited. forgot to... I was just telling Justin, please make sure you mute your YouTube, and I, uh, my <laughs> own YouTube was not muted, so I apologize for that. But, you know, uh, for those of you that don't know uh, the work of Justin Gobi Fields, perhaps you've seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is one of my uh, very favorite movies. Um, as well as Malnificent, as well as a whole bunch of stuff. This guy's just been nonstop. And uh, I want to start off this stream with a question that I constantly get. Um, and I think Justin is going to be the perfect person to answer this question. And the question is, is it ever too late to start pursuing your dreams? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I, I used to really think so, but, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, when I started out, I was, you know, I was working uh, in pizza delivery and all that kind of stuff, but I, I really wanted to give art one more chance, and, and uh, you know, I was in my 30s, and now I'm, I'm 38, actually, and, uh, you know, I just see nothing but challenges ahead, but they're fun challenges, and I, I can't wait to, to tackle them. Uh, I don't think you're ever too late. I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think it's ever too late. I really don't. And for you, you know, you're still in your 30s. So not yeah. even 10 years ago, you were delivering pizzas instead of working on movies. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be five years ago, five years ago. Holy smokes. Now, <laughs> what is is there any kind of like advice that, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people are like, okay, Justin, just tell me what to do and I'll do it and I'll get there. You know, I want to do the same stuff that you're doing. Well, you know, I, I think it's it all comes down to doing the right amount of research on what you want to do and going to a school or, you know, finding a path or career goal that you want to go after. So, you know, when I, when I first started, you know, I, I wasn't really even clear completely on on what concept art was, you know, in um, one of Scott Robertson's books, uh, The uh, Skillful Huntsman by a friend. And, you know, I just fell in love with that process, even though I'd never had I'd never done it. I was doing, I think, websites on the side at that time or restaurant menus and, you know, business cards and stuff. And I, I just didn't even think that there was a real job that you could get in this industry, um, just just creating stuff, just coming up with imagery, and that blew my mind. And I knew that I I really wanted to try at it or at least be close to that process so I could watch it and 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 learn from it. That's awesome, and I hope. I hope everybody, you know, if you feel like something is logical, what we're saying, I hope you do it. You know, because there's too many things out there where we know we should do this, we know we should do that, but then we just don't do it, right? So, yeah. um, for those of you that are new to the stream, please type in question in capital letters, and then you can write your question, and we'll keep this nice and fun and interactive. Okay, so we're going to start off with last week's questions, because there's always a, a few that we didn't get to. One is real quick. I'll answer this real quick. Um, somebody was asking, I got a schoolism plastic water bottle as a freebie from a workshop. I love it. Um, <laughs> can't find any info about the plastic material it's made from, uh, if it's still safe to use. I don't really know what it's made out of either, but it seems <laughs> like it's safe to use. I still use mine, so, you know... Um, I still have mine. Yeah, use your best judgment, but it should be cool. As long as you take care of it and you wash it, you know, <laughs> I think it'll be fine. So next question, Holly Rose asks, how important do you think it is to learn 3D for illustrators these days? It's another tool to buy and learn, but is it important enough to pour the time and effort into? I'm going to pass this, of course, to Justin. <laughs> Well, I, I will say this, that um, right when I was getting into this field, 
Um, I, I feel that uh, well, I don't want to say like perfect timing, but I was right there in that in that time slot where um, a lot of production artists were supplementing their workflow with either 3D bases to paint on top or, um, you know, sculpting uh, creatures and then painting on top of them. Um, so right then and there, I could tell that that's the, where the industry was heading, and it's still heading there today. Um, and I would say that it's almost kind of – it might be your art director's personal preference, you know, Uh but at the end of the day, it, they don't really care how which what program you use, as long as you you know you're getting your images done that day. Now, certain programs will work better with certain you know pipelines or workflows. But um, in my opinion, you know I totally see that there's just going to be this new generation of you know hybrid 2D 3D artists um, because the tools are just getting even more easier and really more. You know, like a sculpting program like ZBrush is so cheap in comparative to what, you know, Maya was, you know, a, two years ago. It's just ridiculous. So a lot of these other companies are coming up with, you know, uh, different different sculpting uh, methods or different 3D modeling. Moto's really, uh, really awesome. Moy is great. Keyshot's awesome. You know, there, there's just, it's it's all personal preference at this point. But I will say this, like, you know, 3D is used in almost every form of illustration uh, when it comes from entertainment and not e and and also into advertising. So you know, <clears throat> it's one of those things where if the more the more programs that you know and the more technical you can get with your artistry, I feel the more open to other jo types of jobs you can be. Yeah. Definitely. And you know what was interesting was when you were talking to me a while back, I don't know if you remember, but you were talking to me a while back just saying the possibilities of 3D. You know, once you're, if you're creating concept art, if you're creating character designs in 3D and they like it, then all of a sudden you can give them, you know, a, a base to start off with in 3D, right? And they can give that to their modelers and, you know, they, They'll save money. They'll save time. Um, and the other thing is, I think you were talking about a, a gun that was designed in 3D that you're, you know, that you put together. And it's like now that you have a gun, you could actually print that out, like a space gun or whatever, and you could print that out, and and all of a sudden that can actually be used in the movie, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's just trimming off tons and tons of. Um, you know, work that would have had to be done by a bunch of people. And now, you know, it's, it's like a one-stop shop almost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's never been a, a cooler time to be a hybrid artist because there's other things out there that you could supplement your income. You know, um, I know plenty of guys that are, you know, doing statues, uh, they're doing toy collectibles or custom one-offs for like hot toys and stuff. And, uh, that's super interesting, or they're making their own characters, uh, printing them out and doing their own form of, you know, like toy design. And, and that just absolutely fascinates me. Um, you know, we, we currently, we use a lot of ZBrush here at, um, at Ironclad Studios and, you know, it, it's done nothing but help the workflow. And once we have a base down, it, it just allows us to do our job more accurately and more quickly because we have literally a, an asset list that we've created of our of you know whatever piece we're working on. And it, it, it's it's able it, using that plus you know a, a really nice renderer, we can keep our our stuff looking all very similar and very photo real. Um, so it, it really, really helps out when it comes to that stuff. But yeah, when you sculpt anything, like say if you do a weapon design in 3D, you know, taking the time, once it gets approved, you know, maybe one or two days later, you have a printable solution. And from there, you can just make molds of it. And you can make your own, you know, uh, collectible line if you wanted. And I just think that the, the tools for creating your own things have never gotten easier. Um, and, and more affordable. So it's definitely very cool. You know why I want to learn 3D, Justin? 
because I, I want to make my own like custom uh, doorknobs and like light switches, you know, like imagine there's like a creature head, you know, kind of like on a plaque, but you reach inside the mouth and that's, there's an actual light switch inside or something like that, you know? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But I think a lot of your ideas are a lot, probably a lot better, interesting, <laughs> futuristic weapons and stuff like that. That's really neat. Um, well, you know, I just look at like the old, you know, like the old Disney ways where the, they would be designing on paper and at the same time they would be designing in clay. So this is just, uh, you know, a merging of those two, uh, you know, ideals and you only need one person to do it now. Um, and it's never been easier to get something in and out of a, uh, you know, form two printer. Uh, it's 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 just simply awesome. You know, there, there's nothing like uh, sculpting a, a custom toy and then giving it to, you know, like your nephew or something like that. That's that's the best feeling in the world. Oh, that that <clears throat> is so cool. Well, you know, I of course, this sculpt, this sculpt is my sculpt. You know, I've been actually taking your class in advance. Um, the class hasn't come out yet, but people can register for it. Introduction to ZBrush, especially good for those of you out there that might be intimidated by ZBrush because I am, you know, intimidated by ZBrush I, or I was, you know. Until I took Justin Fields' class, and now I'm not. You know, <laughs> it's it's done in such a way where it is very friendly for people that don't know how to use ZBrush. But as well, if you do kind of know how to use ZBrush, the really great thing also about your class is that you don't just teach. Oh, what does this button do? What does that button do? You teach the techniques that you use for sculpting. And so I think a lot of people will also be very interested in that as well. Um, definitely check that out on schoolism.com. Um, let's go on to the next, next question because the questions are piling in pretty <laughs> quick. Um, next question is from Phil Harvey. What are the repeating problems that you see with people's portfolios? That's interesting. What, what do you say to that, Justin? Um, I would say, you know, it's one of those things where it, it people either don't get specialized and they don't know which one that they want to use, um, or, you know, or what kind of path that they want to do, you know, because the industry it, it has its ebbs and its flows, and I think that right now there's a huge huge call to be a uh, a generalist as a concept artist. Like you have to be, kind of be able to do a lot of things, um, and I think that. I think that if you want to get noticed, you should specialize. Um, whether it's you know if you want to do creatures or if you want to do costumes or you want to do props, you know I'm not saying don't explore those other things. Definitely explore those other things, but definitely get your foot in the door by being known for one thing. I totally agree, and the thing about that that scares a lot of people or deters a lot of people is like, well, I like this other stuff as well. I don't want to give that up. You know, that's also one of my loves. And I could tell you that once you get really good at one thing, you could totally move on to the next thing. You know, I've never done ZBrush and I'm moving on to ZBrush, right? And same kind of idea. So let's go on to the next question here. Let's, next question is from Luis, uh, Luis asks, how long would you draw in a day or work on art in a day in correlation to your age? What does that mean? For example, I'm currently 15 and have school, so I only spend eight hours a day drawing. That's great. Eight hours a day drawing? That's, that's fantastic. No? Yeah, that's absolutely fan. I wish I had that kind of drive when I was your age. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's great. What were you doing at fifteen, Justin? What was your interest at that uh, time? I think I was like playing D and D and going to comic book stores. That was about it, really. I I wanted to be a comic book artist for the longest time. I really did. So many of us started off wanting to be comic book artists, right? What oh, made yeah. you? What made you? all of a sudden switch and go, nah, I don't know, maybe not for me, maybe I want to do this other thing. 
Well, you know, I don't think it, it wasn't – it was never a question of, you know, do I not want to do that? You know, it's it was more along the lines of, you know, at that age, you're, you're very impressionable, especially to those around you. So, you know, I, I had a lot of people saying, like, you're not going to make money in art. You know, uh, there's no career in it and, and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, that really turned me off for, for, you know, several years. I mean, I still kind of collected and I was still, you know, a fan of the industry. But um, I definitely took that, you know, uh, I think I took, yeah, like almost 12 years off of doing artwork. I didn't really do anything for a very long time. And I used to love, love sketching and painting and sculpting in uh, in high school and uh Man, you know, it, it in the Midwest there there's just not a lot of really good art schools that teach, you know, knowledge about all the different kinds of art that you can do in this industry. And I feel that there's a lot of colleges out there that are just now, imp, you know, implementing you know game game degrees and all this kind of stuff. And just be wary of that, you know, because if they're doing it just now, then they don't have a basis for the real understanding of what it's being used. And I think the biggest enemies for, for those kinds of places are, are is literally the internet because you can get on here and, and, and go to an online school for way cheaper. And that's just amazing. You know, like I wish I, I would have had stuff like schoolism and, you know, gum road tutorials and, and all that stuff when I was uh, 17. Oh my God. Well, that's why, that's why I started schoolism was to, <laughs> you know, satisfy my own needs, my own kind of dreams of what I wanted education to be, right? And mm-hmm. the, the very interesting thing about it is when you learn from somebody that's actually applying the skills to big projects, the projects that you want to do, it's a different level of education. If you're yeah. just learning from somebody that knows how to use the program or thinks that they know how to use the program, you could actually be steering in the wrong direction. You know, when I was trying to learn ZBrush before, I thought it was something different. I thought, you know, uh, the way of actually using ZBrush would be way harder than how it is now because that's I, that's kind of just how I was taught. Um, yeah. And then I gave up right away. Pretty darn <laughs> quick. Yeah. But then with your methods it's like you're actually teaching the techniques that you use for work right yeah absolutely absolutely well that that makes the biggest difference for sure so um luis wow 15 years old eight hours a day drawing i think we're seeing a glimpse of the next uh one of the next big superstars so that's fantastic keep it up fernando asks after oh This isn't even a question. This is more like a statement, but this person wrote question in the beginning, and I like this, so I'm going to read it out. (laughs) Fernando says, after one year of being disappointed by college in my country, I dropped out and decided to study by myself and go to workshops and schoolism, and after six months, I landed an internship. That's what we're talking about. Right on. Congratulations to Fernando. Next question is from William Johnson, and William Johnson says, how do you stay fresh, keep inspired, and maintain momentum when working on a big personal project in your own bubble? Also looking forward to the Seattle workshop for the first time. Uh, Before we answer this question, let's definitely keep that in our heads, but Seattle workshop, as well as all of the uh, schoolism workshops for 2017, they are all on sale tickets are all on sale and i'll give you a promo code the promo code is education okay if you use that promo code you will save some dough and the promo code expires uh the promo code expires on february 20th which is i believe that's monday yeah so Definitely check that out. That's going to be awesome. Seattle, Florence, Calgary, Beijing, London, Berlin, Portland, Copenhagen. That's that's the lineup. So pick your pick your place, and uh, we'll see you there. Next <laughs> question: What was your favorite uh, schoolism workshop location? Because you went to a few. 
Uh, you know, it's kind of a toss up. I really enjoyed Dubai. Dubai was amazing. Um, but I, I, I had an absolute amazing time in Calgary. Right on. Yeah. Calgary. Yeah. For sure. Well, you know what? Calgary is with the Calgary Expo and yeah. the hospitality that that Comic-Con shows its guests is, you know, uncomparable. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Beaner Boy asks, <laughs> Bobby, I have two questions. When will you show some uh, Schoolism Workshop love to Charlotte, North Carolina? Second, will you read my comment about my dream? I'm not sure what that was. That was from last week, so I won't be able to read your comment about your dream right now. But um, North Carolina, I miss North Carolina. We used to go to uh, HeroCon out there, and um, the hospitality, the food, first time I had grits, I think, fantastic. <laughs> it was wonderful. So was I the first time? Yeah, they don't. Oh my goodness! They don't really have grits in Toronto, not that I know of. Uh, but yeah, no plans yet. So yeah, I'm not sure. Try to hit us up at the other workshops for now. Uh, Fran Francesco ask, asks asks uh, I'm about to leave my job in a big gaming company um, in the U S. and move back to my country country to pursue my artistic goals my country does not offer the same opportunities do you think it's a step back i think i could definitely speak about this one because i live in toronto canada you know i mm -hmm. i barely work for any canadian companies um not that i have anything against canadian companies it's just like the big <laughs> coolest projects generally come from somewhere like california uh does it do I feel like I took a step back? No. No, because I'm still working a lot. And uh, especially, you know, something that a lot of people might not think about is Canada has its own dollar, right? It, it has its own mm -hmm. Canadian dollar. And with the exchange rate, it gets pretty good. Um, there are like some years where the dollar, the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar were on par. Uh but then now it's like a dollar thirty cents or something like that to every U.S. dollar. So all of a sudden I got a raise by thirty percent. You know, and that's a huge advantage when you're living in a a country where you know you could take advantage of the uh, exchange rate. So next question, we'll just keep it going because I. Definitely mm -hmm. want to get to today's questions. And the next question is, how important is your age in the industry? I think we talked about this in the very beginning. Let's go on to the next one. Yogesh asks, how do you balance client work and personal work? I have difficulty balancing both. Client work usually drains me. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to answer this as well, but I would love to hear... Justin, I would love to hear your answer to this. How do you balance all the stuff that you do? Because you do quite a lot. You know, it's I'm I'm still figuring that out. You know, I don't feel that I have like a, a a total grip on it because, you know, there's so many days where I have to kind of just you know play it by ear and juggle lots of duties. You know what I mean? Um, last year uh, was particularly tough. Uh, for me personally because I didn't get to do a lot of art I didn't get to do a lot of growth and as an artist you know the need for that or the wanting for that is is so um, demanding uh, that it, it kind of took its toll on me and you know it, it's one of those things where you have to find that balance because I was definitely several times throughout the year last year I was very um, depressed because I wasn't doing the the work that I wanted to do. I was doing more manager or, or managerial type duties because uh, of my position here at, at Ironclad. Now, I mean, <clears throat> we've we've kind of like try and re we're trying to reassess that and constantly change that to where I can get back into it. But I think you you just have to you know make it a personal goal of yours. <clears throat> you have to you have to keep keep pushing forward and making sure. That if you see something 
or if you get a good idea and you are inspired by it, just try new things. Get you know, try try to make try to make it a personal goal where, you know, oh, I saw this tutorial and you're like, you know what, I want to give that a try because it's just going to make my work better. And I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly you know getting uh, other other people's classes or taking a look at other courses, you know, and 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 looking up on that stuff. And it's it's definitely kept me interested and you got to find your, your passion, you know, and right now that passion for me was, um, you know, this year we're, we're going to be really trying to do our own video games and our own IPs this year. And, uh, I'm super excited about that because I, you know, we, we have some interesting stories to tell here and I think that people will enjoy it. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with then. Uh, that's very exciting. I think I you actually showed me some some work in progress last time I was down at Ironclad, and uh, yeah, love it. Uh, <laughs> for myself, like same kind of thing. I agree a hundred percent with everything Justin was saying. One thing that I had difficulty with is, you know, y you want to work on these classes, you want to try out these tutorials or sign up for some class and you want to be able to make sure that you do the class. Um, but then I have this other work where it's immediate uh, benefit. You know, for example, it's monetary benefit and they pay you and you need yeah. to pay for some bills and things like that. So a lot of times you'll just keep doing that and you'll think, oh, I should, yeah, I should check out that tutorial, but um, I don't want to check it out right now. I'm kind of on a roll. I need to keep going on this project, right? So what I do is I go into my calendar. At first, I, I have a to-do list like most people, but then I'll look at my calendar and I'll look at my to-do list and start making blocks of time time chunks in my calendar where it's like, okay, right now I need to do a meeting. Right after that, I'm going to put in, uh, you know, two hours to work in ZBrush. And then after that, I'll put in, you know, 15 minutes for this meeting or half an hour for that meeting. And then, you know, so on and so forth. So when I'm on a roll, my alarm goes off and says, start doing this other thing or even call grandma you know stuff like that <laughs> and it forces me and it reminds me every day you know to stop doing this let's do this and in a way that's really nice as well because you it's like you're kind of losing control of your schedule because it's set right but at the same time you don't need to think about your schedule anymore because you planned it ahead of time you know you put in thought you know you put in energy so now you can just kind of brainlessly force gump just do it right and that has really helped me with your class actually justin to find the time to learn about zbrush because i know that's a big goal of mine well that's uh, awesome I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. It's literally addictive. <laughs> yeah, in a really great way. Um, yeah, kudos to you because you made it really, really fun. Um, let's go on to the next question here. So next question is Meg Chan Doodles asks, other than taking community classes and schoolism courses, what do you recommend for self-studying effectively? Justin? Ooh, um, self-study, you know, for me, I'm definitely a fan of, of, you know, just movies in general and the movie making process. Um, I use that or, 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 you know, inspiration from behind the scenes and stuff like that to work on my own stuff quite often where I'm just exploring ideas or, or, or figuring that, that kind of stuff out. I mean, hmm. I guess the best technique is just, you know, if you're not passionate about it, move on to something that you are. Well, also, you touched upon uh, making your own IP, making your own yeah. projects, right? That's yeah. a really great way for self-studying. You know, when you're on like a, a project and it's challenging or it's intense or it's both, 
by the end of the project, you definitely notice an evolution in your skills in your art. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's what we would recommend is really like taking on your own personal project like what Justin's doing, I would say. Now, Brendan asks, Bobby, when is the new ZBrush course available on Schoolism? It's literally available right now. The very first class, it's already booked. So definitely get on the second class because, you know, I will state it in this podcast that ZBrush, the, the combo between ZBrush and something like Photoshop or like the 3D, 2D hybrid is going to be huge in the future for designers as well, concept artists, visual development people. Didn't you say, didn't you tell me, Justin, that everybody working on Star Wars pretty much incorporates 3D elements into their, like, uh, into their, uh, what are they called, story moments that they paint? Yeah, you know, whether you're using it to block out an environment so your perspective is perfect, you know, especially in Star Wars, there's a lot of repeating shapes. There's a lot of really cool, um, you know, architecture that's so iconic that you have to get it right. And, and when you're working in productions, you know, certain certain art directors will literally make those art assets for you and share it amongst the team. So the team will be using multiple you know, 3D assets to either paint on top of uh, very quickly or, you know, just really try to use that to speed up the workflow. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, 2D is dead by any means. Uh, it's definitely, you need to know that foundation in order to do this, this process properly. But, um, yeah, I mean, 3D is there to, to help us do these images, these complicated images. Um, with such realism and just to get your idea out in a manner that can be absorbed by just about anybody. Yeah. And you know, like the whole entire aspect of knowing the 2d stuff, that's what helped me a lot as well. You know, this sculpt took me what two hours. Um, you know, I'm not even done your class. I I'm on lesson four or five or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so, so it doesn't take much when you know a little bit of something else as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so definitely. And it's almost like I almost equate it to uh, the dodge and burn tool. You know, you can use it in a really great way. But if you are not good artistically, you can't just depend on the fact that the computer will calculate, uh, you know, lighting or whatever for you and make your stuff look good. It will, people that know will know that you don't know. Trust yeah. me. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's go on to the next question. Uh, these ones are from today. Ahmed Ali says, hello, Bobby, the type of art I want to go uh, is the anime manga like illustrations that Krantz Kushart does? Also, you always talk about art goals. Uh, my goal is to be a craftsman like Tarada. Okay, so there's no real advice or no real question there. <laughs> I guess um, this person is asking for advice to do that thing. Well, my advice would be don't just be like that person, Tarada or Krentz. You know, you want to study from a few different people and keep that going. Keep the learning going because those gears of, you know, being able to learn, they will get rusty if you don't keep using them. Absolutely. I agree. Now, you started learning, you know, uh, your stuff with the 3D and everything in your 30s was it hard to get back into that learning mode um i think that i think that it can be um for me it was very i was very intimidated you know um i had you know i i am i was attending uh the noman school of visual effects um and there was a lot of 3d uh software coming up in the pipeline that I knew that I was going to have to learn. 
And uh, I was there for mostly design classes and uh, just almost giving myself a, a, a refresher course in entertainment design. And, you know, I tried Maya and it didn't it just didn't take with me. I just didn't like it. I did. It didn't feel like an artist tool to me where, you know, I had just completed a, you know, 10 week or, or 11 week class with, um, you know, John Brown, who's a sculptor and we were sculpting in traditional clay. And then from there, I jumped right into ZBrush and, you know, using that traditional knowledge and, and understanding that the terminologies were the same from physical sculpting to digital sculpting, uh, really helped me transition into using ZBrush uh, as my main program. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I just kind of took to it. Um, and, and I really wanted it, you know what I mean? Like I really wanted to work in this industry and I really, uh, do enjoy, uh, creating stuff for film and for video games. But I, I think it's, it's individual question. You know, it all depends is, are you doing it because you think it's cool or do you actually really, really, truly want to work in the industry? It's like you're describing that elusive, uh, fire that some artists have deep within them that burns <laughs> at a much higher intensity than other artists. You know, it's like we all have to go through that period in time. And it seems like that's what you're kind of describing to me, that you had this intense, just burning desire to not just get good, not just learn stuff, but to excel. Oh, you know, absolutely. And, that, you know, there was also there was also moments where, when I uh, when I had left and I was working freelance, or even especially when I was spending time um, at uh, Section uh, Section Nine Studios with Dan Levisi, where you know we would be sitting there working on vendor work, and and you know he would be sitting there creating for his uh, his IP, and I was insanely inspired and jealous that he got to do that, and I was just like, man, how do I get from here to there? And he's just like, it's easy. Just start creating. And, you know, I, I did, you know, I took a, I took a little less vendor work in and, or freelance work in, and I made sure that I had time to fall in love with the creative process again. I think that if, if you love that process, if you love not doing the same thing over and over, you know, you could be designing fantasy one day to sci-fi the next, and then something completely different on the third day. That is, I love that. I love knowing that every day is going to be different. Abhinav Sharma asks, I want to work in concept art. So can you describe the overall concept of concept art? I also dream to be a traditional animator. Okay, let's pick one first. You know, <laughs> so that would be the first advice. But um, the concept of concept art I used to think, I used to think that it's just like uh, designing the look of a character, or the look of a place, you know, um, how many buttons should I put on this shirt? How many lampposts should I put on this street? But it's that and then some. You are describing, you are designing the place or the people or the moment. So there all of a sudden needs, you need to address the character, you, you know, even if it's an environment, you need to address the character of this environment because the environment is almost like background characters for the character to act with, you know. So the personality of the character, uh, the feeling of familiarity of the character or its environment, those are the things that was... Uh, that I learned later on after school, you know. What about you? Did you learn anything like uh, working on the job that you never really understood or realized when you were in school? Um, yeah, most most assuredly, you know. Um, there there were even a few instructors um, that I had I had I had you know listened to that had literally told me at that time that uh 3d wasn't a big thing to do or to learn for concept art and then you know when i got my first you know job at a design house that was all we were using you know um so it's definitely 
you know, I'm ha- I'm trying to think here. What's the best way to answer? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hmm. <laughs> well, definitely one thing that I uh, learned a lot of when starting to work on big projects and things like that is dealing with people, communicating with people. This is something that should oh, yeah. be a class in school, but isn't. You know, everybody thinks communication is all about how do you speak to somebody, but somebody has to listen as well. So there should be that incorporated in your communication skills, you know, being able to listen to the director and decipher what she or he means when they're saying whatever about your concept art. Yeah. And and, the, the thing of it is like the more you get passionate about your craft the more you want to dive deeper into really figuring out how things work you know um i something that i never thought that i would be setting time aside in my week is you know watching documentaries and figuring out how are things made and you know what's what's these processes or you know learning about space travel because like when i come to create i want to have a very um large bank of knowledge and i think that <clears throat> excuse me i think that by watching and seeing other artists in our field really take to that and really open up their their mindset and their their facts and getting it all together you know all the way down from from mike hill to you know Eflin mercer you know like these guys research everything that they're creating and if you when you're creating worlds and characters to a such high level or degree that you're even designing their biology. I mean, it's it's uh, it's absolutely fascinating to me, and I just can't get enough of it. That's awesome. Uh, let's go on to the next one because, <clears throat> wow, these questions are really piling in here. It's <laughs> fantastic. Tim Walsh asks, should I submit the three to five piece? portfolio pieces ASAP for the portfolio for the Portland workshop or will it be okay to wait a little while uh, you can wait a little while Portland I don't think that happens for a while so yeah work on your portfolio and then you know submit it before the workshop happens and it'll be in there um, because yeah in Portland we're doing a thing there where we're going to be doing the regular you know workshops and lessons and all that good stuff but also we're going to take a few portfolios put them up on screen and go over them uh giving specific advice dealing with portfolios so that's going to be really educational for many people not just the person uh the person who we're looking at their work you know uh Chloe asks Justin as far as textures go for your models do you take your own reference photos? Do you buy uh, from a website? If so, what website? Um, I kind of do a little bit of, of everything, really. Um, I like to make my own textures. I like to um, buy photo packs. Um, there's there's a lot of really you know with the with the advancement of like gum roads and stuff like that. I really enjoy the the ones the most where the artists are putting together like their photo ref collection or they're traveling and they're taking a bunch of photos um, that are free to use. Um, I I try to. Oh, we just lost Justin for a sec. I'll try to get him back. Hey. Oop! I got dropped there. Sorry. It's all good. You're back. Um, so yeah, I would say, um, you know, building up your own textures, um, and taking photos is always a great practice to get into, but sometimes when you're on the job, you know, you can't just go fly to New Zealand to get some mountains, you know, uh, you gotta get, you gotta get, uh, you gotta build up your library and investing in those kinds of things and having your own assets to pull from. Uh, may be a little costly in the beginning, but at the in the end, it'll pay off. I, I really think so. Bristol asks, 
Are you using reference or pulling an idea from your head to sculpt now, Bobby? Uh, this is definitely out of my head because I don't know anybody that looks like that. But um, it's also from kind of like my mental reference library, right? And that kind of goes with some of the stuff that we've been talking about uh, thus far you want to constantly be collecting more and more information whether it's as files or you know just kind of studying them in your head and having them in your head Luis asks working full-time and taking classes from schoolism and life drawing I feel like I hit a wall and not getting better how do you get over a slump when you're a beginner struggling to get better well number one is consistency right you want to be consistently regularly uh, going to that thing that you're trying to study don't put it down for two weeks you know schedule a little time block that's gonna be on repeat in your in your calendar and that will really help the other thing is you're taking schoolism and you're taking life drawing and you're working full-time make sure that you're just you're not gonna spread yourself too thin yeah um, I I will do things like I'll say okay for these bunch of months I'm going to concentrate on this you know you can do that that works as well but definitely the time blocks in your schedule that's that's helped me by far the most I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Justin, but, uh, um, you know, it's cause you can get overloaded, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where you just got to constantly remind yourself, what's the end goal? Mm. You know what I mean? What's the end goal? What are you, what are you going for? Because that's the thing you should constantly work on, you know, um, whether it's, do I want to work on characters or do I want to uh, practice my photorealism or I do, I want to practice my stylized, you know, which whatever I feel the greatest passion, you need to solidify that and follow that. You know, I think earlier we had a there was a question where it was also like, you know, oh, I want to, you know, I, I want to do concept art, but I also want to be an animator. Well, you need to decide what you want to do first because you have to be first at something. Um, you know, I'm not saying you can't do both because you can definitely do both, and I've seen many, many artists you know, uh, do their own thing, whether it's, you know, doing concept work and then turning that into a 3d asset, uh, that is rigged and modeled or, you know, vice versa. Um, you have to, you have to understand that at, at some point the chicken's got to, you know, come before the egg, um, and really hone in on that skill. And why, and that's why I think I said earlier was, uh, you know, pick something, that you truly enjoy and master that put your 10, you know, your 10,000 hours in on that and really, really hone in and get known for that because you can always experiment and learn other things. Um, I, you know, one of those ideologies that I, I still see, you know, on Facebook occasionally where it's just like, it's the mindset of, well, all I got to do is learn this one program and then I'm, that's it for me for life. I'm good. And that's just a terrible, terrible mentality to get into. And as an artist, you know, I've come to terms with I'll be constantly learning new programs for the rest of my life. I'll constantly be learning new ways of thought, new new ideologies, and gathering new reference. It's never going to change, and it's never going to end. Um, and I'm completely okay with that. Perfect. I, I got nothing to add to that. That's... Yeah, right on. So, <laughs> Mother of Czar asks, is it possible to freelance as a non-professional in the entertainment industry? Well, that's a funny question. You know, you're a professional when you feel like and you act like a professional. And professionals, that, you know, that means that you're, you're getting work doing that thing. That's what you do for your profession. So, if you want to get work in the entertainment industry, act like a professional. You are a professional when you take it seriously. Abhinav Sharma asks, uh, 
I have good line control and I can draw, render realistic stuff, cartoon and semi-real stuff. Also, I can draw anatomy and perspective up to uh, fisheye, but I can't design. It might be because this person is doing a lot of more like you look at something and you copy it, you look at something and you are heavily influenced by it and that's why it's very hard for you to come up with your own stuff right like there's different gears that we kind of put our brains into to think about things right so uh there is literally a ton of questions so i'm if you don't mind justin <laughs> well, let's just go oh, on no. to the next one yeah alex how would you handle staying motivated and social if you're like me and you live in a cabin in the middle of the mountains? Whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, social might be more difficult, but, you know, over the Internet. Absolutely. You... And the Internet should be your best friend. You know, uh, there are so many groups out there. You know, there is um, – Facebook groups that that can help keep you motivated and social and from there you know you can also reach out to some of your favorite artists and possibly start you know online meetings with them or sketch groups or you know whatever you know use use your community you know if if that community is schoolism use use schoolism your fellow classmates are going to be your future you know coworkers so reach out to those people and get to know them definitely and also you can see in in these streams, even like these chew streams, there's literally a community happening. There's always the same people showing up and talking with each other, getting know to know each other. And a lot of times these conversations happen, they continue even after the streams. So don't feel like you're all alone in your cabin in the middle of the mountains. <laughs> even though it might just feel like that, you're not, Alex, you're not. Jenna asks, does schoolism ever offer a scholarship or financial aid sometimes for the 30-day in-house workshop? I've always dreamed of applying, but I would never be able to afford it. Right now we don't because, you know, we want to we don't want anything to affect anything about what we do. So, same thing with schoolism online. There's Unfortunately, there's no scholarships or financial aid at this time, but one of the reasons is because, first of all, it's like 15 bucks a month, <laughs> so like how much scholarship do you want? Um, you know, but of course, the, the Schoolism House, that one's much different. The 30-day in-house workshop, that is the most intense thing that we do at Schoolism, where you and three other people would be selected, uh, vetted, you know, um, to live with. Thierry LaFontaine, he's one of our uh, artists at Imaginism Studios, and you would be living with him, watching him do his projects. He's teaching you every day. You're not just learning from him, but you're also seeing when does he get up in the morning? When does he go to sleep at night? And you're with three other artists very intense, very motivated artists. And when you have, you know, it's like sharpening, what's that term? What's that saying? Sharpening iron with iron or steel with steel or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. So, and by the end of your trip, towards the end of your trip, we'll fly in a guest artist to stay with you as well. And Justin, you've been there. We yeah. went there together. Mm -hmm. That was great. I had an amazing time. Totally. Me too. That was super fun. And and just to get to kind of talk with all these people much more in depth and hear their stories and, and their life stories and everything and eat their food. Everybody, you know, a lot of people will bring in their own recipes and everything. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's great. All right. So... Nawa, Nawang, sorry, Nawang Sherpa asks, do you know anyone from third world countries who is living the dream in the industry? Yeah, tons. Do you, you know a few, Justin? Yeah, I, I know, I know a, a few. Yeah, actually, um, there's a lot of them, actually, you know, um, 
you know, we I haven't had a chance to work with him yet, but I, you know, I follow his work very, very closely, and he does an excellent face sculpting. Uh, uh, the Mall is amazing at what he does, and his, you know, his techniques are really, really interesting, and um, I hope to work with him soon. But uh, you know, he might be too busy, and I'm pretty sure he's overseas. Uh, and, and you know, the the really nice thing is like. I get to meet a lot of talent from, you know, all over the world when we, you know, when, when we do the, the schoolism stuff, when we do, you know, when we've gone to THU uh, together, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and going to workshops all over, um, most likely you're going to run into other professionals there. And when you meet those people and you become friends, don't forget that when, when you're out there looking for a job, you know, uh, ask ask those people for advice you know ask them to take a look at your portfolio that's how you get to you know from a to b is by you know studying and doing projects with you know your fellow artists and getting to know them because they're the ones that are going to be in the trenches with you so you know it, it's it it shouldn't feel like networking it should be you know more like uh, friend working you know what i mean where it's like yeah, I get to work with other artists that are completely passionate about the same things, and we get to grow and learn from each other, and that's the best. Well, that's also why I feel you know so many people is because, you know, both you and I, it comes from a genuine place of, like, really Mm -hmm. wanting to find out more about a person. You know, it's not any kind of, uh, oh, that person you know, does this, so maybe I can get this out of the person. No, it's not like that at all. It's just more like, no, wow, that yeah. person does that. That's super cool. You know, I I would love to get to know him more. You know, that's pretty much it with no underlining intentions. Keep it honest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Monica asks, what kind of fears and struggles do you face in your life and work, and how do you overcome them? You know, problems like laziness or fear of uh, failure or imposter syndrome. What do you do, Justin? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I still suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, so do I. <laughs> and, and for those of you that don't know what that means, it, it means like you, you don't feel like you belong um, because you've either worked it up in your head as like, you know, everybody else is so good and I hate all my stuff. You know, we as artists, we're so hateful, um, not to really anybody else, but except for our, you know, our own ethics and our own skill set. Sometimes we're just not happy with a piece where other people would be totally happy. Um, and I think that that's, that's a good thing, but also a bad thing. Um, you know, you have to be aware of how far you've come, but never, ever let that stop you never get comfortable with you know with that level um always be pushing you know uh, it, it's it's kind of a mantra and i feel that you know especially last year um i wasn't i wasn't listening to that mantra uh, enough you know where i didn't push myself or get out there and do new things or try new programs or uh, practice new techniques or or do enough extra artwork or personal work so it's it's a uh, it's one of those things where you you have to become your own coach and you have to make sure that you're doing the things that you want to do because if you don't no one else is going to you know do it for you and no one's going to hand you the keys of the kingdom you got to you got to go out there and earn that now Aiden from South Africa asks would it be possible to get your rundown of what character design entails is all of is all you need is to be good at creating characters and stories around them. Um, I think we should both kind of take turns on answering this one. And this is going to be, I think, you know, wow, time goes by so fast. So this is going to be the last <laughs> question for today. Uh, so Aiden, thank you for your question. Everything that you said is correct. You need to be able to create good characters and stories around them. But even more so, you need to be able to listen and interpret um the whoever's giving you the comments your art director production designer director whatever that is a lot of times it needs interpretation especially when you're dealing with um, people that don't know how to draw 
perhaps. They use, a lot of times, directors will use more emotional descriptions. Like, yeah, that character, it just doesn't have that, you know, kind of like spark in the eye. You know, that that thing, <laughs> you know, and you're just like a lot of more like, you know, beginner artists would be like, what the hell? This person's crazy. But um, veterans will be like, OK, let me try to understand this. Let me try to interpret it. And so that is a huge part of character design as well, because you're not just designing your character. You're designing for somebody else, for a much bigger project. You know, your character is just a piece of the whole entire thing. And w do you have anything to add to that about, you know, character design and the things that you need? Um, you know, I think that it, it all comes down to... Uh, the specialization, you know what I mean? Like there are people that are completely fine with designing um, vehicles all day long. And that's, you know, they've found their passion. And I think that if, if it sounds to me like the part of concept art that you want to go into is definitely character development by that question. So, you know, would, would you focus on prop making or, you know, environments? Um, I would, I would, but uh, your main focus is going to be that you know that career path that you want that that character design. So doing that kind of stuff, you know, you it's it's really hard doing character work because everybody wants that job, right? The best advice I could give you in when getting into the industry is be able to do a little bit of the other stuff. Because that's going to get you a job sooner than the industry. You know, like if you if you're just out of school and you're you know you're a character designer, um, you're not going to get to design Kratos. You're just not. You know, that's going to go to a lead and a, se a a seasoned veteran. But you know, while you're there, learn from that seasoned veteran. Does that does that make sense? Am I you know? Uh, I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I mean it's. It's one thing, I mean, and and that's also where you know personal projects come into play. You know, um, I I have an absolute blast sitting in my studio, trying to think up new characters and new alien races and new villains, um, my way, where I get to sculpt them and you know uh, just create their mythos, and you know I'm not getting paid for that. I'm not getting you know. Uh, anything out of that except for the love of doing it and i try to intertwine you know even tutorials or classes around that subject you know one of my favorite things to do is especially when you see a new tor tutorial out there or uh, a new class is tie that in with um whatever it is i'm working on the side so i can learn and grow and i think that that's a good good way to do that doing keep keep going i mean if you love doing the character work and everything like that and building up the stories don't stop. You're just gonna, you know, you're gonna soon. Soon you're gonna realize that your 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 learning list isn't just from other artists. It's from storytellers. Fantastic. Uh, that's all the time we have today. So I want to thank everybody that tuned in. Thank you so much for hanging out and all your awesome questions. We will get to the other questions next week during. Friday stream next week and next week's Friday stream will go back to the regular time which is 10 a.m. Eastern time or minus uh, 500 GMT or whatever however you say it uh, and the guest artist for that stream I will be accompanied by the phenomenal Evan Mull Amundsen yeah that's gonna be yeah. great and of course the biggest thank you today goes to my good buddy mr justin goby fields <laughs> not Thanks only for me. hang out with me but to teach me and expose me to zbrush uh this sculpture on screen if everybody can see it this is thanks to justin so big shouts <laughs> out to justin as well uh, i did want to mention justin you are you still doing Twitch? Uh, I just started a, a Twitch channel, actually. Um, 
and uh, I don't oh, I don't even have that up in front of me. But uh, if you follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, I'll be posting all that in, in uh, that info. Uh, and my Instagram handle is jfields217. Awesome. And they could probably look up uh, Justin Gobi Fields Twitch or Ironclad yeah. Twitch or something like that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Great. Great. All right, everybody. Take care and have an awesome weekend. Laters. Want more to listen to while you draw and paint? Remember to visit schoolism.com. You'll find art courses, live workshops, and over 100 free video interviews with many of the top artists in the art industry. Where do professionals go to keep learning? Schoolism.com. Thank <laughs> you.